Welcome to the Having It All podcast, the show about what it takes to live an abundant, loving life. My name is Matthew Bivens, and each week I'm helping you get out of your head so that you can truly have it all. Let's do it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Having It All podcast. My name is Matthew Bivens, and we are live. Yeah, I'm recording this episode live right now on Instagram. So shout out to everybody on Instagram who's watching this. And this is cool. I've, uh, I, I felt really inspired to do something different today. And that's going to be a little bit of my magic. And we'll get into that in a second. But today's episode is awesome because I'm talking about fulfillment. I'm talking about living a life where you truly feel fulfilled and happy and content and peaceful. And if you aren't feeling that way right now, I'm going to walk you through a very simple method, something that I use in my life that allows me to make sure I'm checking on the right different things to make sure that I am fulfilled. And so this is going to be really cool. Uh, This is a process that I do with myself, I do with my clients, and I'm going to walk you through it. It's really simple, and it's just going to help you to feel more fulfilled each and every day of your life. All right, let's talk about some magic because that's one of the things that I'm big on is reflecting on these magical moments, moments when you influence self, others in life in an empowering way. And the reason why I'm really big on talking about magic and and sharing it is because every single one of us are incredibly powerful, incredibly powerful people. But when we're in our funk, when we're going through our stuff, when when we're in the midst of circumstance, it's so easy to forget how powerful you are, right? Like it's so easy to forget that you are a creator, that you've co-created everything in your life, that you've 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 summoned these different, you know, experiences or people or whatever into your life. You can forget that when the shit hits the fan. So by reflecting on magic, it reminds you how powerful you are and it reminds you how you have your hand in everything going on in your life, whether you realize it or not. So I'm going to share a piece of magic. I actually have several pieces of magic. I'm going to share them and then I invite you, if you feel inspired, to pause the episode and reflect on magic in your life. All right. So I got a few pieces of magic here. Uh, I'm going to cover life magic first. Because remember, magic is your ability to influence self, others, and life in an empowering way. So my life magic is is great. It's real simple. I went to Starbucks this morning to get a coffee, and they had me waiting in line a little bit longer than usual. And so when I got to the front, they were like, coffee's on us. That's magic. You know, that's life magic. That's That's the universe dropping some abundance in my lap. And it was awesome. So I had my money in my hand. They're like, nope, you're not going to pay anything today. So instead of, you know, paying for that coffee, I just dropped that money in the tip jar so that I could, you know, make that deposit uh, into the the employees and pass that abundance on to them. So that's a real simple piece of magic right there. That's some life magic. Some self magic, you're actually experiencing it right now uh, because this whole idea to live stream this episode as I'm recording it it literally was just a, a download that I got in in a, in a second, right? I was setting up to do my episode and I thought, oh, that'd be kind of cool to go live. And one of the things that I'm working on honoring is when I have an idea, I'm just going to roll with it. Like if I have an idea, if my spirit is, is, is pointing me in a certain direction, I'm going to go ahead and take that action. And normally what I what I do is I think about it. And as soon as I start to think about it, I start to justify why it's not a great idea. I start to rationalize why, well, you probably shouldn't do that for X, Y, and Z reason. And I really want to play for honoring that, that inner voice, right? Like honoring that creativity, honoring that inspiration. So when I had the idea to go live, I was like, done, we're making this happen. And, you know, I don't have an elaborate setup, but, but before I hit record on this episode, I was, I was showing the folks on Instagram my podcast setup. And like right now, I've got my phone sitting on top of two yoga blocks, <laughs> that's literally how I'm, I have my phone set up to go live. And that's all it takes, right? Like we don't have to overcomplicate things. And so my self magic was having that inspiration to go live and just rocking with it and, and going with it. And I feel great because I honored that, that, that idea from me. And I know that as I keep honoring those things, magic keeps on pouring out. So those are the two pieces of magic I want to share today. And now I invite you to reflect, pause and reflect. What magical moments have you created in your life? Where have you been a powerful creator for yourself, others, or life itself? And listen, it doesn't have to be big stuff, right? 
a two dollar coffee at Starbucks is not that big, but it's magic and it counts and it matters. So reflect on your magic. And then we're going to move on to listener love and get some water real quick. What's up to all my Instagram folks? What's up, Lauren? What's up, Matt? It's great to see everybody jumping on Instagram and, uh, and joining us in this live stream. Um, this might be cool. Who knows? If you all give some feedback that you dig it, or if I dig it, I might do this more often. And uh, if you don't know my Instagram handle, it's Matthew underscore Bivens, and you can go there. And you know, I've been I've been toying with Instagram more and more these days. I, I'd say I'd, I'm still a beginner in how to effectively use it and how to be consistent with it. I'm not super consistent on Instagram. Like I might post two or three things in one day, and then go a week, and then post two or three more things. But I'm I'm sort of testing out the platform, so this is this is fun for me. Uh, ha, Lauren, I love that I'm live as well. This is fun. So thanks for joining me. Uh, okay, where are we? We're at listener love. And I've got some really awesome listener love today. Um, this was a conversation I was in on Instagram. And I'm actually going to read a part of it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a part of it. And then I have a little bit of, uh, of a response. And I think it's going to connect with everybody. Um, so today's listener love comes from Kay on Instagram. And Kay, I really appreciate you just taking a moment to connect and share because what you shared, it's something that I experienced in my life and I know everybody else does as well. So Kay, I'm going to read your message real quick. You said, I've been listening to your podcast for over a year now and I swear whenever I feel off and tune into your podcasts, the message you are delivering is spot on to how I have been feeling. It's like you're in my head. Thank you for what you do. It eases many listeners' minds. And Kay, I, I'm, I want to say thank you for sharing that with me because I experienced that as well in my life, right? Like when I'm off or when I'm challenged with something or I'm feeling stuck, oftentimes I will receive a message or a sign or like a slap in the face of the universe just delivering exactly what I need to hear in that moment. And what I want to say about that is that know that when that happens, it's happening for a reason, 100%. It's not coincidence. It's not luck. It's just not happenstance that you're happening to go through a tough time and say a relationship and then you're like, you know what? I haven't listened to Matthew in six months. Let me listen to Matthew. And boom, the episode that you turn on has to do about relationships. That shit is not a coincidence. It's something for you to tune into. It's something for you to lean into and to pay attention to because in that message is part of the solution that you're looking for. I guarantee it. And this happens in my life all the time. Like I was going through some rough stuff a couple of weeks ago and I opened up my, my YouTube and I was going to play some ESPN clip, right? Something from one of the ESPN shows. And I was, I've been listening to a lot of Abraham Hicks. So YouTube delivers up Abraham Hicks suggestions. And the title of the suggestion was exactly what I needed to hear. The title was, you are much closer to breakthrough than you think. And I was like, damn, ah, okay. Okay. I feel like I'm a thousand miles away from a breakthrough, but you're telling me I'm closer than I think. All right, let me lean into this message. And I listened to the video and it was spot on. It hit me right in my heart, right where I needed to, 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 to what I needed to hear. Tears were coming down my face by the end of it. And like, I fully believe in this stuff. I fully do. So I love the fact that Kay, when you tuned into the show, it hit you exactly where you wanted, where you, where you needed to be hit. And I just invite you to maybe go back and listen to that episode again or listen to the segment that really resonated with you because there's a message there for you. There's something there for you to to act on or to think about or to digest. So, Kay, thank you so much for sharing that with me on Instagram. Thank you for listening to the show and I appreciate you connecting. If anybody else wants to connect with me, whether it be on Instagram or email or whatever, I love getting into conversations. I love hearing your aha moments. I love being able to support you through your breakdowns and your rough moments. So hit me up, Matthew underscore Bivens on Instagram, mattcbivens at gmail.com. Those are the two best places to connect. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. I have a couple things I want to share, and they're very relevant to today's topic. And these are two things that I've created for you all. One of them is free. One of them is an investment. And both of them are incredible ways for you to have it all. That's really what it's about. Like I want you to, to know in your bones, in your DNA, and to feel every day that you have it all. And so I've created a webinar 
that helps you to have it all by helping you connect with your purpose. That's my purpose webinar. And right now we're in this series of purpose, right? We're talking about purpose in all these different episodes, purpose and fulfillment. So I'm doing this webinar. It's on October 2nd. Oh my gosh, I'm not prepared for this. I got to go and look up the exact time. This is funny. This is what happens, folks, when you get inspired ideas and it's like, oh, I forgot to do this piece too. So, all right, it's happening on October 2nd at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. I'm going to help you figure out what your life purpose is. Yeah, I'm going to help you, walk you through a process that's going to help you arrive at your life purpose so that you can feel unstuck, right? So you can stop feeling stuck and you can start really living your life the way that you want to be. So it's totally free. It's a webinar. All that means is that you're going to join me on a live video and that's it. It's going to be a live video. I'm going to walk you through this stuff. So go and sign up, MatthewBivens.com slash purpose. I'm going to help you connect with that purpose, which is tied into feeling fulfilled and feeling complete in your life. And that's totally free. So go check that out. October 2nd is the date of the webinar, MatthewBivens.com slash purpose. And the second thing, the last thing that I wanted to share was the Having It All Blueprint. Now, that's the, the course that I created that is truly the blueprint to helping you have it all in your life. And I absolutely love this thing. I love this course. I've gone back through it several times recently, made some updates. It is such a powerful course, and it truly helps you to design your dream life by helping you build some foundational pillars. And it's those foundational pillars that allow you to go forth and be the person you want to be, create the life you want to create, attract the people into your life, the romantic lovers, the friends, whatever it is, it's, it really helps you to have it all. It truly does. And so, like I said, I've, I've made a couple updates, made a couple tweaks, and it's just a stellar, stellar course. And I'm actually going to pull some pieces from that course into today's topic. So that's why I want to share this course with you again. So go check it out, matthewbivens.com slash blueprint. You'll see an updated page, that my website page, matthewbivens.com slash blueprint. Check it out. If you were curious in the past and maybe the timing wasn't right for you then, perhaps the timing's right for you now. So go check it out. MatthewBivens.com slash blueprint. Just read through the page and see if that message connects because this really is a bridge from where you're at right now to where you want to be. And that's what I created this course for, to be that bridge. And it's the things that I've done in my life to go from feeling totally disconnected from purpose, lost, confused, imbalanced, overstressed, uninspired, to being on fire with passion, to being fully aligned in my purpose to knowing what, it, what, what is required for me to be in my balance and be in my center and to operate from that every single day. That's what I deliver in the Blueprint course. So go check it out one more time, matthewbivens.com slash blueprint. And let's flow into the episode because this is a perfect segue because this whole idea of purpose and fulfillment and having it all, it is all really tied in there. It's all so connected. And uh, shout out again to everybody on Instagram. What's up? We are live right now doing a podcast episode. Great to have you all with me. This is awesome. And uh, digging into fulfillment today, you know, I was driving and I was thinking, all right, you know, what is the topic I want to I want to talk about? I've talked about purpose, but fulfillment is fulfillment is one of those things that people come to me when they work with me, and that's one of the first questions. I not feel fulfilled. I don't feel fulfilled. I don't feel happy. And I was talking to Sarah as well, and, and she gets those questions too. Like, I'm not feeling fulfilled. What can I do? And it's fascinating that that ends up being a trigger for a lot of us. And I think there's a lot of different reasons for that. I mean, I think right now in society, there's a whole lot of pressure to figure out your purpose, right? To, to know what you're supposed to do with your life. And there's a lot of frustration when we aren't feeling fulfilled. And so that's why I believe that's the question that I receive a lot. I'm not feeling fulfilled. How do I get there? And so I want to address that. How do you create a life where you feel fulfilled? All right? I want to, I want to talk about that. I'm going, to, I'm going to share with you some little bit of context around fulfillment and what that really is and what that really means. And then I'm going to talk to you through how to actually answer the question. Because what I've experienced is that a lot of folks know that they are not fulfilled. They know that they're not feeling fulfilled. But then if I were to ask you, what is required in order for you to actually feel fulfilled? That question might stump you. And that 
is the reason why you're struggling in that area because you don't have a clear answer to that question. So I'm going to show you how to answer that question fully. Now, I want to I want to do something that's totally cheesy, but I want to define the word fulfillment. You know, there's like movies and stuff out there where 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 people start off an essay or a book or whatever. It's like Webster defines yada yada as and I actually want to do that because if you look at the definition of fulfillment, it really connects with why you may or may not be feeling it. So there's a couple of definitions that I found, and there's one that I really like. Uh, one of the definitions is for fulfillment is the achievement of something desired, promised, or predicted, right? Like fulfilling a childhood dream. The other definition, which I like even more, is the meeting of a requirement or condition. So fulfillment is the meeting of a requirement or condition. Like you meet the requirement, you meet the condition. That is much more applicable to the question of living a fulfilled life or the scenario or, or the topic of living a fulfilled life. Because the meeting of that requirement or condition, that requirement or condition is, you know, what is required for you to be happy? What is required for you to be peaceful? What is required for you to be content? What is required for you to be fulfilled? So again, if you've ever talked to somebody, a coach, a therapist, a friend, yourself, and you've said to yourself, I'm not feeling fulfilled in my life. A lot of times we can swap out the word fulfilled for I'm not feeling happy, I'm not feeling content, I'm not feeling at peace, I'm not feeling like the things that are really important to me are being met or being done. If you've asked that question, if you came to me and asked that question, I would turn to you and say, okay, then what is required in order for you to feel fulfilled? What is the meeting of that requirement or condition? So just take that a moment and think about that for yourself. Do you have a clear answer to the question, what is required in order for you to feel fulfilled in your life? Because if you don't have a clear answer to that question, that is why you aren't feeling fulfilled. If you had an answer to that question, then you can go in and say, okay, where am I hitting this answer or not hitting this answer? But if there's no answer at all, if you don't know what is required in order for you to feel fulfilled, how could you ever feel fulfilled? And let's swap out another word there. If you don't know what is required in order for you to feel happy in life, how will you ever feel happy? If you don't know what's required in order for you to feel peaceful and content, how will you ever feel peaceful or content? It's kind of like going to the airport and knowing that you want to go somewhere, but not knowing where you want to go and being frustrated at that. It's like, I got to travel. I want to do this, but I don't know where I want to go. And so I'm pretty pissed that I'm not traveling. It's like, wait a minute, let's get clear on where you want to go and then just buy that ticket, right? Once you get clear on that destination or once you get clear on that thing, you can map out the steps to get there. But if you're not clear as to where you want to go and you just show up at the airport and now you're frustrated, well, guess what? It's understandable as to why you're frustrated. It's pretty much a no-brainer. Fulfillment works the very, very same way. If you don't know what is required in order for you to feel fulfilled, then you can't back into that answer. You can't back into it, right? So there's a lot of different ways you can go about approaching how to answer this question of fulfillment in your life. There's a lot of different, you know, uh, avenues we can go down. I want to keep this really simple. So I'm going to I'm going to give you these areas to ask yourself this question and these are based on something I've talked about before called the five wheels. And these are just five different areas. I'm actually adding two more, so it's seven. So we won't call the seven wheels, but it's these seven different areas that if you ask yourself what is required in order for me to feel fulfilled here, rewarded here, happy here, as you come up with an answer, then you've got your checklist for fulfillment. I'm going to walk you through this. So the seven different areas are physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, social, financial, and romantic or sexual. Those are the seven areas. That if you ask yourself, what is required in order for me to feel fulfilled in this area? And you answer that question, you are going to have exactly what you need 
in order to live a fulfilled life. You're going to know exactly what you need to do or what you need to be addressing in order to live a fulfilled life. Let's give an example. If I ask you the question, what has to happen in your physical self in order for you to feel fulfilled and happy and content? And you say, I feel fulfilled physically when I'm eating nutritious foods and putting nutritious foods in my body, when I'm moving my body a couple times a week, when I'm able to run a mile without stopping, right? However you want to answer that question. Let's just say those are your answers. Eating nutritious foods, moving your body regularly, running a mile without stopping. Those are your three requirements in order for you to feel physically fulfilled. Remember, go back to the definition of fulfillment, the meeting of a requirement or a condition. So those are the three requirements in order for you to feel physically fulfilled. And now, once you come up with that and I ask you, okay, so are you meeting those requirements? If you look at that list and you say, well, I'm not really eating things that are healthy and nourishing my body, so no there. Um, I am moving my body a couple times a week, right? I, I get my 10,000 steps or I go to the gym. So yeah, we'll check that box off. But no, right now I, I can't run a mile either. So right there, you're telling me you've hit one out of your three requirements. Do you believe you're going to feel fulfilled physically if you're hitting one out of your three requirements? Probably not. And that right there tells you what you need to do in order to feel fulfilled in that, in that area. Start making those healthy choices with your food and start working on being able to run a mile. Now, this is just an example. I'm just giving you an example of how to use this to then ultimately create a life where you feel fulfilled. Because part of the reason why you're not feeling fulfilled is those, those areas aren't being addressed. The criteria for you to be fulfilled in those areas is not being met. This stuff is really simple. Like It boils down to this. It's like a science. It's not this, this complicated, artsy, head-in-the-clouds type of thing where it's like, you know, esoteric. And no, it's like, it's science. It's yes or no. It's like, you know, computers, ones and zeros, on and off. Are you doing it? Yes or no. And so if we can boil down your internal feeling of fulfillment, if we can boil that down to a checklist where you can say yes or no, then boom, it becomes easier to know what you need to do in order to feel fulfilled in life. So again, those seven areas, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, social, financial, and sexual or romantic. What's going on? What are you doing in those, or excuse me, what is required in those areas in order for you to feel fulfilled? And so let's do an exercise. Like I really want you to sit down and do an exercise where you pull out a piece of paper, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show that all, all the folks on Instagram, I'm going to get my paper. Here we go. Pad of paper. It doesn't have to be complicated, complex, nothing. Get out a pad of paper, bust out a pen, write physical, a few spaces below. Mental, a few spaces below. Emotional, a few spaces. Spiritual, a few spaces. Social, a few spaces. Financial, a few spaces. Sexual slash romantic. And then, for each one of those seven areas, ask yourself, what do I need to do or what has to happen in order for me to feel fulfilled in this area? And just write it down. Physical, in order for me to feel fulfilled, boom, 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 boom. Mental, in order for me to feel fulfilled, boom, 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 boom. You all saw me on Instagram. I pulled out, uh, I showed you the books that I'm reading right now. I got a number of different books that I've, I'm in various stages of completing. Part of me feeling fulfilled mentally is me learning stuff, reading. That's part of my requirement to be mentally fulfilled, right? So go down your, pa your pad of paper and just fill it in. Make a little checkbox next to each thing that you fill in for each of those seven areas. And then go back and ask yourself, am I doing those things? Am I meeting the requirement or condition? If you are, put a little check in the box. Boop. If you're not, put a little X in the box. Once you've gone through and you've looked at all seven areas, Look at the X's, right? If you have a bunch of X's in some of those areas, then those are probably things you want to be putting some energy into. This stuff is simple, everybody. It really is. Now, the challenging part, this is always the challenging part. Like once you've got your paper and you've said, these are the requirements for me to feel fulfilled in each of these seven areas. This is where I'm at right now. I'm not feeling fulfilled because now it's clear 
I'm not doing the things that are required in order for me to feel fulfilled in these seven areas. So now what you know what you aren't doing, the challenge is developing those habits. That's always the challenge. Right? Let's go back to our physical example. If you need to be eating healthy foods and being able to run a mile without stopping, if that's what you say you need to be physically fulfilled and you're not doing it, well, now you need to look at your life and how you plan things out and say, okay, I'm going to be more intentional about eating these healthy foods. So that's going to start with the way that you, you know, choose the groceries that you buy, the way that you prepare your meals. It's going to come down to what you choose when you go out to eat at a restaurant. And, and that's where some of the challenge comes in because you're going to want to do what feels good in the moment. Eh, I would rather get the, the bacon cheeseburger than the chicken sandwich. Even though you know the bacon cheeseburger is just going to have you feeling good in that moment because it's tasty. And the chicken sandwich is what's the, is gonna, the thing that's going to help you feel more fulfilled because it's the deposit that, you're, that, you're, that you said is required. Or with the running a mile example, it's like if that's one of the things that are required in order for you to feel fulfilled, well, guess what? Now you got to carve out time in your schedule to run a mile. Yeah, you got to carve out the time to actually do it. And that ends up being the challenging part. And so when I'm working with my clients on this stuff, it's easy for us to come up with our list. And then now once we have all the areas that we know, okay, these are our opportunities. These are the areas for us to lean into. That's where I'm able to do one of the things I love doing with the folks I work with, and that's accountability. And that's why, you know, people work with coaches or therapists or form accountability buddies or join workout groups because the accountability is everything, the accountability to actually do those things. Because when you're forming a new habit or you're breaking an old habit, like that, it's a challenge. Let's say for the running example, you got to get up early now. You're like, oh, I just don't want to get up early. Well, if you have somebody holding you accountable, maybe you check into when you get up or that you know you're going to be talking to that afternoon, you're more likely to get up and do it. And having that accountability can help you get past your emotions because it's your emotions that are going to keep you in that same place of not doing the thing. But it's also emotion that you're seeking, the feeling of being fulfilled. It's an emotional thing. So you have to understand that sometimes you got to be able to override your immediate emotions for the, for the short term, the instant gratification for your long-term emotional well-being. You have to be able to do that. So that's like, I don't want to wake up. It's 5.30. I don't want to wake up. But you know what? Damn it, I'm going to wake up. And I know I don't want to do it right now, but I'm going to feel so great by making this deposit in myself and showing up for myself because that's what's required in order for me to feel fulfilled in my life. So I'm going to wake up. That's the game, right? It's that emotional stuff, not getting tripped up in the emotion. I'll tell you, I, I go through that all the time. I felt that yesterday. Waking up for my 5.30 a.m. workout, I'm like, I don't want to get up right now. I would so much rather just sleep. It's cool out right now. Fall is hitting us. It's dark. The crickets are chirping. I don't want to get out of this bed. But I was like, you know what? This is part of my requirement in order for me to feel fulfilled physically. Get up, drive, go to the gym, meet with my trainer, have a great workout, drive home. It's so much bigger than the workout. It really is. That deposit into that physical tank, that deposit into myself is so much bigger than the actual workout. The workout is great and I love to move my body and sweat and all that stuff. But the benefit of it is truly a character benefit. And that's what we're talking about with fulfillment. Getting over that, that one-time emotional thing so that you can make that powerful deposit in yourself and do whatever is required in order for you to feel fulfilled. So also recognize in this method, in this process, that fulfillment has everything to do with you and nothing to do with the external world. You want to make sure that when you answer those questions, what has to happen in order for me to feel socially fulfilled? You want to make sure that your answers aren't dependent on other people. Because if they're dependent on other people, that's a risk because other people can do whatever they're going to do, right? You don't want to put the power in their hands. So make sure when you're answering those questions that it's all on you. What has to happen in order for you to feel sexually fulfilled? Well, I'm moving sexual energy. I'm holding standards for myself in my relationships. I'm being bold. I'm asking for what I want. 
I'm expressing myself authentically. Those are all things that have to do with you rather than I have a hot boyfriend or I've got a, you know, a girl who's, who's amazing in bed, right? You can't control that. You can't control how they show up or the looks of another person. So make sure when you're answering what's required in order for you to feel fulfilled that it has to do with you and it's in your circle of influence to be able to control. That's going to help you in your answer because if you have a bunch of answers on your sheet that all have to do with other people, that's going to allow you to stay in that victim space of, well, there's nothing I can do because my mom is in control of whether or not I feel fulfilled or my boss is is in control. You don't want that. Remember, you are the one who has the power to influence your life. You are the one creating those magical moments, influencing self, others in life. That's you. So as you're coming up with your answers to the question, keep it about you. I love this stuff. I love it because, like I said not too many minutes ago, this shit is science. Like, there's process to this. This isn't just a, a, a feeling thing that isn't grounded and tangible. Like, you can wrap your hands around this. What has to happen in order for you to feel fulfilled mentally, emotionally, and all the other areas? You can answer that question. There is a, a specific answer to that question. And once you have that specific answer, now you can do something with it. Now you're like, oh, okay, these are the ingredients. This is what I got to do. It's like if you're baking a cake, you get the ingredients. You're like, okay, great. Now I got the ingredients. Here we go. I'm going to follow this recipe to make this cake. Boom. So I love this process. This is something that is pulled straight from the Blueprint course. In the third section of the Blueprint course, it's all about fulfillment. It's all about experiencing abundance. It's all about you know, all those beautiful, juicy things. So this is just one little part of that section. And there's seven sections in the Blueprint course. This thing is beautifully full of, of ingredients for you to have it all. It really is. So I like to extract these little things every once in a while. And this exercise of answering the question, what has to happen in order for you to feel fulfilled in these areas, it's pulled straight from the blueprint. And this is the type of stuff, you know, like I make sure in, in whether it's a free webinar or an ebook or a book for, that I'm putting out for sale or a course, like I make sure that you can take very clear action on these things. Because that's what got me into doing the work that I'm doing right now. It wasn't the, let me just sit in the realm of the consciousness and, and spiritual. I fell in love with that later. But what got me into this was the practical and the tangible. Okay, you're telling me if I do more of this and less of this, then I'm going to feel the way I want to feel? Got it. Okay, cool. Let's do it. So that's what I've put into the blueprint. That's what I've put into all the other different things. Um, oh, I'm seeing some cool questions on Instagram. Mac, you wrote, can you give me an example for mental fulfillment? All right, cool, yeah. So in order to be mentally fulfilled, it's like it's that mental muscle, that intellectual muscle. So what has to happen? I, I shared an example earlier. For me, I read. I got to be reading a book, right? If I'm reading some sort of book, that helps me feel mentally fulfilled. It doesn't always have to be a, an empowerment book. A lot of times I read fiction. I love fiction. I love Michael Crichton novels. I love Dan Brown novels. You know, I'm into science fiction and stuff. So sometimes I'm just reading that because that allows my imagination to flow, right? So for me, feeling mentally fulfilled is about reading. Right now, one of the things that helps me feel mentally fulfilled is some sort of educational course. I've taken courses about uh, developing business. I've taken courses on, on health. And being in some sort of course where I have you know, things to watch and activities to do, that helps me to feel mentally fulfilled. So that's, that would be my second box. For me, being in mentally stimulating conversations totally makes me feel mentally fulfilled. Like when I'm sitting across from a person or a group of people and, and we're all sort of sharpening one another's saws, right? Like, you know, you've heard the phrase steel sharpen steel. Like you got to be in it with people who can, who can vibe with you on that level. That helps me feel mentally fulfilled for sure. And I've set that up in my life by having masterminds and accountability groups and different individuals that I meet up with weekly or monthly where we talk business or we talk consciousness or we talk whatever. That helps me feel mentally fulfilled. Uh, any other things right now? I think that's, that's probably solid on my list of three things. So, yeah, just think about it for yourself. 
What is it? What gets those mental muscles firing? Maybe it's Sudoku, right? Maybe it's puzzles. Sarah and I used to used to love doing puzzles. We'd sit down and crank out like a thousand piece puzzle. It was a lot of fun for us. So I love the questions on Instagram. This is really cool. And um, once again, if if you are not feeling fulfilled in your life, there is a simple way for in order for you to feel it. There's a simple solution to it, right? You have to get clear as to what is required in order for you to feel fulfilled. And I've broken down seven areas for you to get clear on. And these seven areas really encompass the totality of your life, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, social, financial, and sexual or romantic. Those areas really cover just about everything. So if you get clear as to what is required in order for you to feel fulfilled, happy, peaceful, content in those areas, now you know what you're missing, right? Now you know what you're missing. And so then the next step is, okay, let me start doing a few more of these things in order to feel fulfilled. And here's a tip. Don't try to do them all at once, right? If you write down three things for each of those seven areas and you realize that you aren't doing any of them, so that means you aren't doing any of the 21 things you say are required, don't just try to jump in and do them all at once. That's not going to work, man. You're going to burn yourself out. You're going to get overwhelmed real fast. Pick a couple of areas that maybe matter to you more than the others and pick one or two things in those areas and start there. Start small. Maybe just pick one thing. Maybe just pick one thing and start building that practice of doing that thing regularly, whether it's daily or a couple times a week or weekly, whatever you determine. So you got to start somewhere, start small and build from there. Go slow, get there fast. That's what one of the things my coaches always tells me. Go slow and get there fast because we want to start fast. Ah, jump in all 21 at once. Boom. That shit will burn you up so fast. And guess what? When you are back on your butt, now you feel guilty or shameful or frustrated that you couldn't hack it. And now you've got more emotional weight and baggage on top of you. And it just becomes even more challenging to then get back into the building the momentum of feeling fulfilled. So go slow and get there fast. Start small and build from there. Baby steps. It's those baby steps that we take that over time lead to massive, massive things. So I'm excited. This has been fun. I really love the process of hanging out with everybody on Instagram. Uh, and I really love this, just, just the download that I had for this episode because I know the feeling of not feeling fulfilled. I know it. It's a rough feeling. It's the type of thing that like it keeps you up at night. It has you staring at the ceiling like, I'm just not feeling happy. I'm not feeling fulfilled. I'm not feeling content with life. And I don't know why. And it's the I don't know why that is the most frustrating, at least for me. It was the I have this feeling, but I don't know what to do with it. There's something missing, but I have no idea what it is, and I have no idea how to go after getting it. And so what I wanted to deliver to you is what I wish I had all those years ago. It's the solution to that problem. You aren't feeling fulfilled? Okay, let's work on it. What has to happen in order for you to feel fulfilled? And let's look at these seven areas and come up with an answer. So I'm excited to hear from you, your feedback on this. I'd love to hear how you process this and, and what you did with it. And if you take the step to go ahead and write down on a piece of paper what has to happen in order for you to fulfill, feel fulfilled in those seven areas, Take a picture of it and send it to me. I would love to see it. I would love to see you just doing the work because work is required, everybody. You got to do some stuff in order to create different habits, in order to create a different reality for yourself, in order to create a different outcome. And the work is really being done on your character. That's where it's being done. It's inner work. So you got to be willing to roll up your sleeves and put in some reps. So show me your reps. Hit me up. Matthew underscore Bivens at, at Instagram, shoot me a picture, or mattcbivens at gmail.com. I would love to see your, uh, your, your processing of all of this information. And I highly, highly recommend that if this resonates with you, if this activity resonates, go and check out my Blueprint course because it's, it's, there's many more activities like this that are going to help you experience an overall sense of fulfillment and purpose and love and passion in life. There's more, there's more to this puzzle. I'm giving you one piece right here, but there's more to this puzzle. And everything in the blueprint helps you to build an incredibly strong foundation 
so you can get so clear as to who you are, so clear as to what lights you up, so clear as to where you're headed in life, so clear as to what your purpose is and your mission, so fired up about all of it, and so clear as to how you can attract some really awesome people in your life to support you in your journey. That's what I deliver in the blueprint. And you can go check that out, matthewbivens.com slash blueprint. Everybody on Instagram, this has been so much fun. I dig this. If you've enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up or a heart or whatever Instagram does to let me know that you've enjoyed hanging out with me live today. And uh, shoot me some feedback on the comments for this. I'll post this on my feed. I'll figure out how to do it. I'm sure you can figure that out. Uh, I'll Google something, but I'll post this video on my feed somehow. And then drop a comment there. Let me know, hey, I dug this. I'd love for you to do more of them. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it as well. So thank you all on Instagram. You're amazing. To everybody in podcast world, I appreciate you. My name is Matthew Bivens, and here is to you having it all. Quick note about the Having It All podcast. I am not a doctor nor a licensed therapist. I'm a guy with a story and a passion for conscious conversation. My thoughts, opinions, and beliefs are my own. So please consult with your doctor or healthcare provider regarding any questions or issues you have related to your personal, physical, or mental health.